Thanks for staying with us here on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Let's now analyze the top stories on the National Dailies on the segment of the press. And we've invited two guests, Adimola Akingola, who's joining us via Zoom, and Polaho Olojede. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning. Good morning, thanks sir. For having me. Good morning. All right. Morning, Let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The first one says, EFCC defends new chair as Graft's allegation surfaces. Shake-up looms in anti-Graft's commission as Buhari names Bawa new helmsman. White paper to determine suspended chairman Magu's fate, says presidency. And on the top here, it says, experts blame insecurity as inflation hits record 16.47%. Marketers raise petrol price to 170 naira. Depots suffer shortage. ACF, Afeniferi, others fought Buhari's silence on Herder's menace. Nigeria moving towards disintegration, Abdul Salami warns. And below here on the Punch newspaper, it says Buhari's Security Council northernized can stop herdsmen and kidnapping, and that's according to an ex-governor. Alleged 69.4 billion naira debt, Jimo Ibrahim loses bid to reclaim firms. PDP mocks APC as ex-governor Daniel defects to ruling party. And more here, Ogo Monarch alleges arms build up as Makinde Abiodu hosts northern governors. Men in military uniforms arrested with 234 kilograms of drugs and CJ kicks as brother fingers judge over three-year detention. Mr. Akimbala, let's begin with you. What are your thoughts on these stories on The Punch? Thank you. Um, yes, you see, in the news, uh, hopefully, I hope for the right reason this time around. I personally welcome the appointment of this new champ. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there in the public space against him. We really don't know which of this is true. It's allegation that he was once investigated by Magu and all that. But I think the Senate hearing we afford us the opportunity of having credible information um, concerning his background. But uh, his appointment, if we must note, is in line with the recommendation of the Al Salami panel that try to de-emphasize the appointments of police officers. People have said he is not a police officer, but for God's sake, we need someone like, like a duty job. Okay, so I want to believe that he is young, he is going to inject fresh ideas, because what FC needs is complete overhauling and restructuring, not just a change of, 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 of leadership. A lot of people need to be retired, we need to bring in new hands, into the organization. So personally, I welcome this appointment subject to uh, confirmation by the city. And I think at that stage, we'll, we'll get more information concerning his background. I, I won't want to speculate at this point. Okay, and let me bring in uh, Salajidi on this one. Your thoughts on this, this story here, EFCC and the new chair. Oh, well, um, I, I'll just add a, a bit to what uh, uh, my brother just said. Um, I like, I like the age. Uh, it's 40. So for those who are clamoring for younger people participation, at top leadership level, EFCC is a top leadership level. Uh, it probably will rival the Inspector General of Police. So it's an opportunity for excellence, an opportunity for a young person to tell the world or to tell Nigerians that, yes, young people can also do this. So let's, um, I, I hope he goes through the... Uh, Senate, Senator uh, Heron, and that is eventually uh, made to hold that position. And, and, and let, let's see what he does. Okay. okay. You know. All right. Okay. Um, which other story here? I don't know. This, this one is, is a big one here in Nigeria. It's about fuel and the price. Marketers raised petrol price to 170. That was such suffer shortage. Uh, Mr. Olojade, your thoughts on this one? Well, um, the, the ball is in the, is in the court of the federal government and, and the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to do the right thing about this subsidy. In my opinion, there is still a whole lot that is shrouded in mystery, in, in, in lack of transparency. It's as if we just enjoy darkness in this country. 
Honestly, if you're going to remove subsidy, number one, you need to let us see, okay, this is the template. This is how prices are going to be arrived at. So that we can also point fingers at things that we think should not be there. You know. And then I want a situation, I would like to see a situation in which even the ordinary, it won't be everybody, even the ordinary consumer will know that there will be a price increase if there is no subsidy. And that is obvious because you see the price of crude has been going up, going up. So on one side, as we are celebrating the fact that the federal government is making more money because the price of crude is going up, the ordinary citizen will be able to know that, oh, this thing that is going up, it will mean that my uh, uh, fuel price will soon be increased. And this is the range of increase I'm expecting. We are better able to manage when we are transparent. But as it is today, they will have labor to cope with. All right. Okay. There's also something on um, Fennifer and um, uh, ACF uh, uh, complaining about the silence of the president on, um, uh, with uh, the regards to the headers crisis. Ms. Akin, will I quickly speak on that? Um, how important is uh, you know, word from the president uh, well, at times like this? I, 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 I just have a feeling that um, we, we have this tendency to put every blame on the president. Don't we have a minister of defense? Don't we have an inspector, inspector, inspector general of police? Don't we have people who are saddled with managing security? The president's statement is not what is important, it is his action. If these people are found to be derelict duty, if they are found to be incompetent, then he sacks them. Okay? So the only thing I want to hear from Mr. President is action. I want to see him take action. The security architecture in the country has broken that is the compromise. Mr. President, take action. I'm not interested in what he says. I want to uh, I want to see him take action. Okay, because what is equal to say and condemn, he condemns, he will move on. The other one happens that he condemns. No. I am more interested in seeing him take actions that will reject the security formation and ensure that there's a permanent end to the security in Nigeria. Okay, right. so don't let us politicize it. Very, very they can say whatever they want. Nigerians want to see action, really, action. All right, let's okay. quickly move to the nation, uh, newspapers, um, and uh, share some of the stories that we can also find over there. Uh, North, uh, North's governors rule out ethnicity in Ibadan mayhem. Also, Bauer's choice for EFCC chair breaks 18-year tradition. Fewer queues back over price hike speculation. And NPC says the pump price remains. And also, uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar is in the news this morning, saying Nigerians living in fear uh, service chiefs hold the ace. It also says they are still on the nation this morning. Inflation hits 16.47%, um, says the NBS. Federal government spends 50 billion naira monthly to sub uh, subsidize electricity. Others on the nation, how Lagos will become a smart city in 2030, and that's from the governor. And also, bandits kill 10 and kidnap 24 in Niger State. Daniel Hijirika and two reps join APC. I think I want us to start with the conversation. I'm going to go to Mr. Olujide now. The conversation on ethnicity in the mayhem in Ibadan. Um, the northern governors have said that's very likely not, you know, the, the cause. Well, I, I think it's a smart approach to this. Uh, it's already a very tense situation out there. And the, the more you go in this kind of direction, as far as public communication is concerned, the better for all of us. Um, this is contrary to um, things like uh, what the Bauchi State Governor was saying the, the other time. Those are people who are inflaming the system with, in, with horrible comments from, from leadership at that level. But this other comments will, will help to douse uh, the, the tension on, on the on the street. Yeah, but, but if, if it's not the reality on ground, does it really douse the tension? It will. In, in, in a way, um, these people are here on ground. They've visited site, they've consulted, they've spoken. So it's not as if specific actions are not being taken. It's not just the talk. The talk is on the broader level that, you know, somebody is sitting down in Kano is not thinking that, oh, they are killing my people in the battle. That is the purpose of those kind of public comments. But as far as action on the ground is concerned, these guys themselves are on ground, visiting, consulting, and speaking to all the stakeholders that are concerned. All right. Not very often we hear from Abdul Salami Abubakar. He seems to be very, very quiet with regards to national issues. Uh, but this morning he's saying that Nigerians are living in fear. Um, Mr. Kimbola, let, let's get your response mm -hmm. to that. 
Ah, well, um, Dr. Lamy, with due respect, is saying the obvious, is telling us what we know. And um, I probably want to also remind him of his role in getting to Nigeria where it is today. As brief as, as, brief as his tenure was, he was the one that supervised the election that, that, that enthroned uh, Chief Capacitor. So uh, it's also part of the problem. So, yes, we are living in fear because of the aggregation of um, poor policies, poor leadership, corruption over the years. Yes, we know we are living in fear. What we want him to tell us is at his level, as a statement, what can he do to reduce the tension in the land? Okay, and if I may just quickly make a comment on, on the, on the uh, Northern Governor's uh, assessment of the situation. Yes, that is a politically correct statement. And like Mr. Aguilar said, it's a public relations, um, it's masterstroke, him at that intention. But just as you also ask, is that a reality? I don't think that's a reality. I watched a video where the guy whose uncle was killed was relating exactly what happened. It started as a scuffle between an Aosa guy and a Yoruba, a pregnant lady. And whether we accept it or not, the, the nation is deeply divided. Okay, ethnicity, yes, there may not be manifestation the way the governors were expecting it, but you can't completely rule it out. You can't completely rule right. it out. Um, Mr. Lodge, um, okay. 30 seconds. Lagos being a smart city by 2030. Uh, how likely oh, well. is that? Uh, Lagos um, is disposed to that if we continue to take the right actions. Um, all of a sudden, some years ago, we saw Mark Zuckerberg in Sabu. Uh, he didn't even go to Abuja. He didn't visit the president. He came to Sabu and started going into cyber cafes and relating with all these tech guys that are all over the whole place. So as far as human resources is concerned, all the way from America, they are recruiting in, in Niger in here in Lagos. So the people required to make that transformation are here. We just need to be able to find the right structure to ensure that we're not just producing them for other societies who, who realize the value, who know the value, and are tapping into it, but that we can also transform Lagos into that state that is able to optimize these resources that we have via production of, provision of infrastructure. So you see all these cabling. By now, everybody should be able to have you know, fiber into all the critical areas of, of, of Lagos. Um, providing financing where necessary, creating hubs, hubs where the techies can, you know, go and do. So it, it is a, it's a possibility. We can do it. But it would, whether we will now get there depends on what are the specific steps that we do and sustain. Okay. And we don't have uh, police harassing people with laptops. <laughs> <laughs> those are, those are right. part of the things we need to deal with. Indeed. <laughs> Let's turn now to the Guardian newspaper. This one says, crypto restrictions open Nigeria to fresh foreign scramble. Without police background, Bawa becomes EFCC boss. Appointment seals Magu Fates, seeking Senate confirmation, rubbishes FG's earlier position, lawyers declare. Terrorists, bandits killed 8,000, 279 Nigerians in the year 2020. That's according to a report by the United States. Buhari, Songolu, Okonjewela, others seek investments in youth. NDLEA intercepts fake military officers with two, three, four kilograms of parcels of drugs. Nigeria's industrial sector needs competition for price control, says Boache. Uh, those are basically the top stories here on the front page of The Guardian. But I, I would love us to talk about this one on cryptocurrency restriction and how it's opening Nigeria to fresh foreign scramble. Because the story here is saying that since the federal, since the CBN, you know, outlawed banks from, you know, performing crypto transactions, more Nigerians have actually signed on to trading platforms and that the unmatched earnings here are driving popularity of investments into cryptocurrencies. Uh, Mr. Akimbola, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I'm happy that the CBN realized the um, futility of action in, in, in the first instance. That, in, that, that suspension has been resigned. That, that's that's um, a step in the right direction. But more importantly, that Nigerians are rushing into crypto trading 
it's a manifestation of acute loss of confidence in Nigerian uh, economy. Okay, and we have, we've always known that you can't control what you don't um, have and what you don't have control over, really. So, if if if, if you suspend the accounts, if you say banks will not trade, people will. We, we opt for other trading platforms, which is what is going on right now. Rather than um, suspend, I think the CBN should be more concerned with regulating, just like SEC is trying to do. Okay, so SEC, CBN should work together. Let's streamline, let's regulate, let's avoid fraud and other um, negative tendencies. But you, can, you can't really suspend it. You can't suspend it. It, it, it shows that we are not we are not progressive. That's my view. There's also something, you know, there that says uh, terrorists and bandits killed 8,279 Nigerians in 2020. And that's from a U.S. report. 8,000 uh, plus Nigerians. And uh, uh, we probably don't realize that we're in a war, which is, I mean, in, in some wars, over 35 years, you don't even kill that number of people. In active war zones, I'm saying, in the, in the, when Iraq was active or Syria and all of them, you don't see this kind of death. And that is why sometimes Nigerians are embarrassed when they get rated um, close to countries like Yemen. And they're like, oh, why Yemen with all this? Because the reality is that these killings are, are, are dispersed all over the whole place from northeast to northwest to everywhere. And we may not be able to put a finger onto it as to what exactly is the, is the true number. But there are other institutions who are gathering this number. When you put it all together, we are more than a war zone as, as Nigeria. And it's the same thing you're seeing that is, that is being echoed by Abdul Salami. But in today's paper, there is another news of about 10 being killed in Niger State again and some other kidnaps. This is what we're talking about. It has become a daily decimal. And it, it's as if... We just need to do more, essentially. We need to do more, much more. Mr. Mm -hmm. Kimbola, would you also react to that? Yeah, it, it's quite unfortunate that um, the current government has lost control of the security uh, situation. Um, there's no, <laughs> there's no, no doubt about that. There's no missing words. Uh, President Buhari has failed awfully in the area of security. And what we do now is people have resorted to self-help. Uh, we resorted to more of prayers, and it, it shows that our hope is only in God. Because you, you can't say you have a reliable police force, you can't say you have a reliable uh, Nigeria army that will, that, that will protect you. So it's like every day now, we look forward to negative news of people being killed, people being kidnapped, and we just pray that it doesn't get to us. But it's, that's just your unfortunate situation. It's sad. Okay. It's sad. I think, I think here's another story Nigerians need to pray about fervently. It's on business day. It says, Nigeria enters one of the worst food crises in history. Mm. It now costs Nigerians twice the amount they spend on food five years ago to buy similar quantities today. That's the story there on the business day. Uh, this one says how CBN targeted financing is reviving Nigeria's ailing power sector. And uh, we see here how, you know, Dianne Betty, Okonjewe Lamu Ibrahim wants Lagos to prioritize job creation infrastructure. <clears throat> but I'd like us to talk about this one, uh, the food crisis and uh, the inflation rate in Nigeria at 16.47%. Mr. Hodge. Uh, expectedly so. Um, we, we, we saw this from afar, from afar off. Um, you have a situation of, in which farmers cannot go to farms all over, all over the country, especially in the northern part where most of the farming in Nigeria is done. That is where you have the worst insecurity situation. Um, now, when you put that together with uh, our usual losses, um, we owe a lot of food produced, a loss to wastages. So, transportation problem, so you have uh, this truck of tomatoes that you need to move from Kebi to uh, Ibado. And before you get there because of the road infrastructure problem, a whole lot of it is wasted. You have electricity problem, which means capacity to preserve some food or to do partial processing is also constrained. Then we are also poor on research 
science and technology as far as agriculture is concerned. So you see uh, the, the rice space in Nigeria where our yield per hectare is 1.8. But China is able to do 6.5. So if they do one hectare of rice in China, they can do 6.5 tons. If we do it in Nigeria, we only make 1.8 tons from the same piece of land. When you go to Egypt, it goes as high as 8. So we must begin to ask ourselves, um, is, is this about land? Is this about doing more farming or about putting more technology and research into what we're currently doing? So there is, it's, a, it's a mix of several things um, and there is need for urgent, urgent intervention. Part of it is what you saw in 8,000 people being killed. It's security. Unless we fix this uh, mix of problems, um, it, it, it portends grave danger. I really can't wait for a time in Nigeria's future where agriculture becomes the buzz, and not just in words, but actually in actions, where everybody wants to get into agriculture, agri-tech, finding solutions to agricultural problems, and all of that that would, you know, totally eliminate these headlines we see about food crisis, we'll, we'll food shortage, and inflation in Nigeria. All right. Well, we obviously need to do more. I remember, you know, in the 90s or late 80s, there was the Nigerian Institute for Oil Palm Research, uh, NIFO, in Edo State. Um, it's a complete shadow of itself uh, today. I don't, don't even think it, it actually exists anymore. There, there are a whole um, lot of them, actually. Uh, in the Badon, you have the Cocoa Research Institute, yes. you have the ITA. There are several of those uh, uh, institutes all over the whole place. But then, the question is not just about institute. Are we putting the right level of investment? Are we able to translate those investments into research output that gets to the farmers who are going to implement them? Are we putting the right? So it's a whole lot of things you know, that we need to think about mm. food security. All we right. need to get Nigeria working, definitely. Let's feed again. All right, um, I think we'll wrap up here. Uh, Mr. Demola Kimbola, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank Always you. very thank interesting. You. Thank you. All right, Gula Thanks for having me. Always thank a pleasure also. <laughs> pleasure to be here. All right, stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going into today in history. I'm going to be sharing something from 1970. It's a crime of passion. That's how I'll describe it. I'm sure you'll love to hear it. Stay with us. Shh.